Hi, welcome back to The House That Sat Down for the third part in a feather painting tutorials. Um, now we've covered sketching and we've covered watercolours. Now we're going to be looking at the uh, techniques that we need to do a similar composition using acrylics. But these are techniques that we can also use for oil paints. Uh, it might take a little while though, so we'd better crack on. Okay, so we're going to start with stretch canvas, but we're going to do something a little bit different from the previous paintings that we've done. I'd like to use black uh, and possibly a gold or bronze colour. Um, they contrast beautifully together, but we're going to start with a black background. Uh, I find it massively therapeutic uh, painting with black, um, particularly previously when I've been dealing with post-traumatic stress. It was uh, massively beneficial to paint with black because I felt like all the dark emotions that I was dealing with were, were pouring out of me onto the canvas. Uh, and once they were on the canvas, I felt like they were trapped there and I had control of them. Um, but I'm not feeling like that today. I just fancy using a bit of black. So here I am uh, covering the canvas. So as soon as we've covered the entire canvas, we're going to need to leave it uh, at least an hour to dry thoroughly. Um, I'm just speeding this up here so that this video doesn't take far too long. Okay. Okay, it's a good idea to cover all the sides as well as the front of the canvas uh, so that the whole thing is a really nice dark black. And then we need to leave it to dry probably for about an hour uh, with the acrylics. Uh, if you're using oils, it will be an awful lot longer. But once it's completely dry, you can then go in over the top and start to work with a little bit more colour. Um, I've decided to go for the copper here rather than the gold and I'm using a very fine tipped brush. Uh, I've got some copper there and a little bit of black to work with. Um, first thing to do is to start loading up the brush. So I'm loading it quite heavily so all the bristles right the way up to the metal bit holding them are, are loaded and that enables you to get the bristles to all line together. You can roll them in the same way that we were with the watercolour to get a fine tip. and I'm starting to layer on where I'm expecting my feather to lie onto that canvas. And you can just see me rolling the tip again there. It gives you a very fine point in order to really go in and get some fine detail. Already starting with some of the little uh, straggly filaments on either side of the neck of the feather. This is the tip of the spine that runs down the centre. And just as we did with the other paintings, I'm going to just lay onto the canvas a little map of where I think the feather's actually going to lie. Bringing a nice little curve down there and round. The fact that they're so flexible gives us um, a lot of scope to work within the shape of the canvas so that it's a, a balanced and pleasing picture. So I'm curving it back around again and a slightly different shape than we did with the first one. I'm just going to show you a painting that I did do uh, several years ago when I was dealing with some fairly negative emotions. Uh, it, it's a very dark blue, a dark Prussian blue, which is the darkest blue that you can you can use without mixing black in. Uh, and I've picked out this image of a lady surfer uh, in silver, which contrasts beautifully with the dark blue. Uh, and she's almost being overwhelmed by this wave that's about to crash down on her. And that's very much how I felt at the time. Uh, I found living in a tent in the garden with my children for s several months after the house fell down was quite a stressful uh, a stressful period of time. Uh, but of course I couldn't deal with my emotions at the time because I had to 
focus on looking after the children. And it wasn't until 18 months later when we actually moved back into the house uh, that I really had to deal with how I was feeling about the whole period. And that's when painting really helped. I've decided now I'd like the image to stand the other way up, so I've gone from landscape to portrait. It's important to think about where the image sits within the canvas because that's uh, a key part of the overall picture. Back towards the tip now and we're going to start marking in some of the shorter filaments towards the neck of the feather. Again making sure each side is nice and balanced but not too even. Uh, I'm just going to speed the next section up a little bit. One of the reasons this is so therapeutic to paint, I feel, is because it's such a repetitive action. You keep going around and adding bits in. You can see there, I'm actually painting out a little bit of the highlight I put in because it's not in quite the right place. If I'm using the same black as the background, then it, it paints it out quite nicely. The key with acrylics, of course, is that you work a little bit of highlight and then you work a little bit of low light and then you may have to go back and do it again until you've got the balance the way you want it. Um, but if you work with quite a bit of paint on the canvas, uh, then you've got quite a lot of flexibility. Um, but you can keep altering things because you just go back in over the top once it's dry and change it, which is not quite the same as with the watercolours. So there's no real need to go from light to dark in the same way. I'm working on the tip of the feather now. Unlike watercolours, uh, acrylics can be uh, massively more forgiving. I mean, I've decided I haven't quite placed the image sufficiently centrally on the canvas, so I'm now adding to the tip of it, the tip of the feather. I'm building it up towards the top of the canvas so that it, it balances better within the size of the canvas that I'm using. starting to build a little bit of black in there as well as a low light. The highlights and the low lights are what gives the image its 3D quality. It makes it stand out off the canvas towards you. Um, now, working with the two colours is, is all very well, but uh, you get to a stage where possibly your highlights are not uh, standing out as much as you would like. So I'm probably going to be introducing a third colour here. The copper is, I like it, I like the way it's working, but I'd like to bring out those highlights a little bit more. So my thoughts are to bring in some gold. It's quite nice working on small canvas because it gives you the ability to do some really quite close work. I'm thinking that the sun light is coming from the top left hand corner and so it's on that upper edge of the spine that it's hitting and the left hand filaments that are closest to the sun. Light obviously travelling in a straight line. Um, and by putting the highlights in, we're then able to have a greater contrast with the low lights. Again, making it uh, stand out a little bit more and be more three-dimensional. Clearly going in initially 
with the highlights, you then have to start blending back in with the other colours. Um, and trying to get a, a very thin set of bristles to work with. Um, I, you might have noticed that I'm, I'm pressing the bristles down against, against the tray down against the flat surface of the tray uh, to get a almost like a, a chisel shaped edge to it so it's a flat end rather than a point as I'm going down the spine there. Okay so now the the key to the rest of the painting is blending those highlights in with the low lights uh, and keep working around until I feel that it's all balanced. The nice thing is of course if there's an area that you're not happy with, and I don't think I'm that happy with this section, uh, you can let it dry and then work over the top, which enables you to create the effect that you're after. black going in there to take some of the copper out because it's not really balanced terribly well there. But it doesn't take much to actually correct it and that's looking a lot better. You can put your own interpretation into this. Um, don't have to paint just single feathers. You can come up with your own designs, multiple feathers, multiple colours. It's entirely up to you. The possibilities are endless. One has to be a little bit more careful with oils, uh, merely because they take so much longer to dry. I have to admit in the past I have, when I finished an acrylic painting, occasionally gone back into the painting later when it's completely dry with oils to pick out particular areas or really boost the colours. Uh, it's quite an interesting technique and it does make quite a difference. Uh, but then once you've finished you have to remember to leave it for really quite a long time until it's completely dry. A few final tweaks coming up now. And I think it's finished. Here are a few other possibilities design wise. Bit brighter background, uh, bright green, a red feather, bright green feather, a red feather, or an orange one, yellow. I think you can get the theme here rainbow feathers falling down. And then right at the very end, I scattered a bit of glitter into the wet paint, which was quite a nice effect. Uh, and then here's another one, similar design. There we go, all done. So that concludes, so that concludes uh, all of the painting techniques that um, I'd like to demonstrate to you with regard to painting feathers. I've really enjoyed it um, and I hope you have too. Maybe you'll consider joining me again for the next project that I put together. In the meantime, I really hope everything's going well for you. Take care.